what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so today we're going to build a high gain preset together in my Axe Effects. so I'm only just now kind of starting to really dig into messing with this thing and I'm really having a great time and getting some great sounds out of it um as most of y'all know I've used the line 6 helix for the last almost four years but I just recently traded it for an amp largely because I picked up the Axe Effects 3 and I just wanted to try something different for a change of pace um, me, I don't use a whole bunch of like effects, phaser, chorus, or even reverbs and delays I don't use very much. I'm more so in, in, into these things for the amp modeling and just for their workflow. I'm using the Axe Effects as my interface right now. So today we're going to just go through and kind of talk about how I like to think about building presets in any of these systems, but specifically the Axe Effects 3 today. So basically what we have here in Axe Edit is Sure this is recording, it appears to be. Okay, but yeah. <laughs> Here in Axe Edit, we have what I'm going to consider like a template for any of the uh, presets that I'm eventually going to make. So we have the input, which is my guitar going in right here. A gate that I can turn on. A spot for an overdrive. Another gate. This I usually just run a gate after the overdrive. If I can get away with that, then we're good. But sometimes you need more than that because things get noisy. Then I have an amp block followed by an empty space that would put like a reverb or a delay or if necessary another gate. A cab block and then the output block which will ultimately be what you're hearing. Okay, so let's talk about the cab block first although we're not going to dial it in. So I just dialed, I just chose some cabs that I enjoyed a moment ago using my uh, for my series my KSR series video. Um, so for cab one, I ended up on this guy, a four x twelve Brit TV nine hundred six. I just like the way that it sounded. But you see all of these different cabs here. It's a whole freaking bunch of them. Um, and I will say that although it's kind of overwhelming, so far I've enjoyed the built-in fractal cabs more than I have the built-in line 6 helix cabs uh, but this cab sounds like this I'm using the Friedman not Friedman the uh, Freeet D60 more amp block right now so <laughs> But I found that kind of the secret to success to making IRs really sound great is to use a normal mic'd up cab IR along with like either a room mic or um, an IR built with someone micing the back of the cab, which kind of gets you a, a more open feel. Yes, this is a tip from Ola England, and it's a good tip. So let's actually solo out this, what I chose for that, which is another 2x12 with V30s mic'd up with a room mic. brighter and it also sounds more ambient because again it's a room mic and I find that these two blend together very well so I can the way I think about this is that this over here the 4x12 which is just mic'd up is my main cab and then I have this uh, the room mic cab supplementing it and as you can see I have it the volume dialed out just a little bit on that cab this is what they sound like together <laughs> Honestly, the cab IR tends to be one of the most important parts of your sound, but we're not going to mess with that today. Like, it's just entirely too much to, like, I'm not going to select a cab with you guys right here. All right, over to the amp block. So it's currently on the Freeet D60 more, like I said. Let's switch over to the D60 less. So at first glance, first listen, you would think that this is like just a pushed clean type of amp or a crunch amp. But let's 
turn up the drive up here just a bit. Input drive, which I think is just push hitting the input of the amp a little bit harder, kind of like adding a clean boost. And then overdrive is the amp's actual overdrive. I'm sure that could be very cool with um, some more shaping, probably an overdrive, definitely an overdrive in front of that, but we're not going to use this model. We're going to go with the Free D60 more, which has more gain on tap fairly instantly. Back to neutral for the gain. I typically like to mess with the EQ and the uh, presence and depth controls first and just make sure that that's where I like it. Specifically, let's start with the presence and depth controls. I typically go for where I can hear like the sound start to change to something that's pleasing to my ear. Increase the input drive. I know some folks have a roll with this just the way that it is, but I do like to have a little bit more gain than what I think most people do. Well, not most people, but uh. There are those folks that try and get away with as little gain as possible. That's not really me. I like to get to where there's maybe as little gain as possible, which is about around here, and then add a little bit more gain, because that's just how I do. some of these options here. You can change the preamp tube types. Well, I'm gonna leave that where it is for authenticity's sake. Power amp, KT88, super cool. fifties for a little bit less bass response. <laughs> and you can also so something I find kind of cool about the Axe Effects is you can add a if you just want to quickly just add a uh, overdrive you can do it in the amp section itself but you don't have the full options to control that overdrive. So this is a grinder. Let's turn it on.
it right there. Uh, probably with a gate somewhere in there. But anyway, um, so I turn that back off. And let's go to an actual overdrive block. A BB Pre, I have no clue what that is. Let's see what else we've got going on here. Shimmer Drive jumps out to me. because the overdrive is typically the noisiest part of your signal. I've already got this set up pretty much how I like it. roll with from the oh wait hold on I want to slightly increase the threshold on this guy yeah I can totally work with that let's just try and drop one more amp block in here and see how it goes so I'm gonna bypass the uh, overdrive There is one that has really jumped out at me as being super cool, and that is the Thordendahl Modern. Obviously an amp model, either made or preferenced by Frederick Thordendahl of Meshuggah, who I like quite a lot. Alright, so setting levels. This is modeled after a rectifier, a Misa, a Misa dual rectifier of some sort. These amps, of course, come to life when you add an overdrive to them. And we'll get there. Let's start with the presence and depth again. Ooh, this is something totally different. 
different, huh? <laughs> and this is why they say the Axe Effects is crazy deep. Because it is. Depth. fairly opposite from what I'm used to. Still sounds good though. drive just a bit. I think we can give it a bit more. And turn on our shimmer drive. But yeah guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please like, share, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can expect plenty of Axe Effects videos and comparisons and all that stuff in the future, along with the pedal videos I've been doing. Take care.